everybody! Welcome back to another episode of Falcon Plays uh, Neo Scavenger. I apologize for the last episode leaving off on such a high note. At this point, I think you're kind of expecting it and used to it, though, so I'm an asshole. Um, you know, unfortunately, we just have to deal with it. I do. I deal with myself being an asshole on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not easy, believe me. <laughs> Either way, uh, the last episode we got to the scary forest. Apparently there's a white face with fucking black raccoon eyes staring back at me. It sounds slightly insensitive if you ask me, but I'm not gonna go down that path. Either way, we have to find out what to do. Well, I could hide. I could get ready to fight. I could call out to it. I don't know what to do. I'm gonna call out to it, I guess. Uh, let's be ballsy about this. Surrender option? What the hell? Alrighty. Uh, try not to tip the scales towards hostilities. You call out to it. In return, it raises a hand, palm towards you. Simultaneously, several more seem to appear in a white circle around you, seemingly from nowhere. Probably a good thing I didn't fight him, or else I would have been fucked now, huh? Traveler, says the first, we cannot let you pass through here, and there is an illness in you that threatens us if you leave. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, you and me game. Uh-oh is right. What do you mean they're gonna let me leave? You will come with us now. It's less, it's less in order than a statement of fact. The others begin closing in on you. Oh, fuck me. Don't tell me it's over. I could hide. I could be ready to fight. Allow them to take you. Uh, let's just allow them to take you. What am I going to do? Fight them? There's a lot of them. Hide? They know where I'm at. Uh, one of them produces a blindfold and fixes it over your eyes. Oh, this can't be good. Believe me, I've gone out a lot of times and, you know, drinking, and when somebody decides to blindfold you, nothing good comes out of it. Believe me. <laughs> That's never happened, I assure you. I hope it hasn't, unless I was passed out drunk. Either way, meanwhile, your hands are bound behind your back. Despite the restraints, the whole process proceeds without any unnecessary force. You seem to be handled with both caution and respect. Alright, well, that sounds relatively good. Uh, you're turned in place and led forward through the forest. Minutes of silent traveling later, you, you're, you begin... You being to hear sounds. I think that was a mistypo there. You begin to hear sounds is what it should say. Uh, not forest sounds, but people sounds. Tools being worked, a crack from a fire. Voices startle you from your training and listening. Your captors are talking, but not in English, not in anything you recognize. One of them calls out and a distant voice responds. It sounds like you're entering a camp of some kind. You smell wood burning, your arrival causes a stir, and you step mo uh, move. You stop moving for a moment. More talking. Uh, you're turned in place a bit and then taken away from the heat of the flame for a while. I love the heat, man. Put me back. I'm cold. <clears throat> There's a sound of fabric, and then the cool air becomes warm, like you're inside. You're set upon something soft, your bindings and blindfold removed. Alrighty. Oh shit! This might be it! In the blurriness, you see what you're in. A, you see that you're in a room. Figures stand around you when you rest on a cot. It's it's warm in here, and smells of smoke and cedar. Or cedar. Your captor is white, white faced and raccoon eyed. Again, kind of insensitive game. I'm just throwing it out there. Silently turn and leave you alone, closing a flap of fabric behind him. Dried roots hanging in thatches round its dome-like room, but with equal parts animal hide and purpose junk for walls and flooring, the smoke you smell trails from a small brassiere. You contemplate making a break for it, but you're pretty sure whoever runs this place has got it locked down. Still, maybe a peek outside is in order. Before you do, however, the flap opens and then steps an imposing figure. Her face is painted white like the others, and she stands to the side as a boy enters with a tray. The boy has no face paint and looks to be in his teens. There's a hint of disinterest in him as he lays a tray in the center of the room and then turns to leave. What are you guys feeding me? What is this, like, fucking hostile or saw? Do you want to play a game? I don't want to play a game with you guys, man. What are you, what are you feeding me? Uh, say thanks, uh, ask who they are, demand to be released, or examine a tray. Um... I'll say thanks? I want to be cordial. <clears throat> Thanks. You mean it, too. This has been a frightening ordeal, to be sure. You're telling me, game. I'm fucking frightened. Viewed in retrospect, though, everything about it has been calculated, and no harm has come to you. This place may warrant some rethinking. The teen turns, embarrassed, but with the warrior's face softens. Michelle will explain when it's time, she says, stepping into the opening. Then turning to face you, eat. You need it. <clears throat> you don't know if I'm hungry. I'm, I'm okay. I'm, my hunger's sated. Thank you very much. You move towards the tray. It's a dish piled high with succulent fatty meat with cooked squash, beans, and corn. Strangely, this meat brings your nostrils to life. The meat for which you so desperately clamored seems forgotten momentarily. Your mouth watering as you survey the food. Even the veggies might offer some satisfaction. Huh. That's interesting. Your hunger sated, you lean back in the warmth of the room. The scent of the dinner mingles with cedar and tobacco. Ooh, sweet. You guys have smokes too? <laughs> Alright, we're living the life now. 
Despite the weight in your stomach, there is a sense of unrest within you. Anxiety is pulling you towards the door. A fear is trying to convince you that every moment in here is threatening your existence. But there is a part of you wanting to stay. Instinct is holding you fast. You're not sure whether laziness and contentness is putting you in danger or if addic or addiction is dragging you away from recovery. Does that have to do with the Wendigo thing? It might. Um, footsteps, appro uh, footsteps approach you, and the flap itself lifts to reveal two warriors. Their faces have been s have some white paint, and one signals for you to follow. You're led outside, and you can see what you're in a small cluster of huts away from the main village. You catch glimpses of others in this camp. Maybe they're like you. The watchful eyes of nearby warriors suggest as much. You are being led to an oblong dome hut, which uh, from which stream emanates into the cool air. A man adorned in bear symbology seems to be preparing the hut. Joe Smidiwini of Nukidumdem. Alright. Cool, whatever language that might be, bro. He will help you in your struggle with Wendigo. The warriors stop transferring your care into Joe's hand. Really? They're gonna cure me? Inside the hut, Joe situates you near some heated rocks. It's warm in here, downright hot, in fact. The air is thick with steam and the scent of burning sage. Kilshig and Winshag Gash. Joe says, stalking the fire and pouring a liquid into the stones. There's uh, sputtering a new cloud of steam rises. The Wendigo wants you, but it will be driven out by the Kishing, by your fullness. He steps into the doorway. Wait, what do you do now? Where's he going? How long? You try not to seem ungrateful. It will take time, he stops turning. Wendigo does not want to leave. You must concentrate on sending him out. It may take some. It may take many sweats. With that, he dozes the flap, leaving you alone. This is like a sweat lodge? That's pretty badass. Man, you guys have it going on good in the post-apocalyptic world. Uh, you try to focus on casting out Wendigo and soaking up the warmth. Comfortable warmth soon turns to intense heat. You feel the steam and smoke in your lungs and sweat begins beating on your skin. After that, what seems like a long while, you realize your mind has been wandering. You drifted into thoughts of days past and the ordeals suffered on your journey here. Joe returns, his voice calling from outside before he enters. He guides you into the cool, empty air. Hmm, he sighs heavily. I think Wendigo is still with you. He offers you water. Take this, it will, and we will try again. After a few droughts, and once you feel ready to try again, Joe leads you back inside. You try to focus on casting out Wendigo and soaping up the warmth. Yeah, we read that before. You find yourself thinking of days past. Uh, as time passed, curiosity gave you the craving to need. And when, is Wendigo a weakness that you must shed? Uh, player has eaten a hearty meal. Player has received the sweat lodge treatment. All right. Joe's foot is approach again and he calls out once more. You meet him at the opening and he looks carefully at you. You look tired, he says knowingly. Will it ever be gone, you ask? He shakes his head. You've cast him out, but he will always remember you. He puts a hand on your shoulder. You must be vigilant when he returns. So much for being quote-unquote cured. What if I am not strong enough? Joe presses his lips together. If you don't have the strength, you are in danger to all. He turns towards the great fire. Come, Michelle wishes to speak with you. You both begin walking, leaving the sweat lodge behind. Joe takes you across an open field into a ring of huts. Some people watch you closely while others seem to notice you. As you approach, the heat of the great fire grows and he turns to you. Be at peace and wary of Wendigo. Then he gestures towards the fire. Please. Hey, chop me into the fire? Dude, I'm okay. I won't eat a human meat again. I'll, I'll just, I'll control it. It's like an addiction. I'll stop. I could cold turkey it. Uh, you're standing in the Anishabe Tribal's Nation Gathering Area. ATN. Sweet, we are here. By the great fire. Around you, you see an area where people are sharing a meal together in a trader of goods. Farther away, you see a cluster of huts near a sweat lodge where Joe, the Nuke Midiwini, tends to stick and tends to the sick and wounded. Alrighty. Uh, visit Joe. Sit down for a meal. Browse the trading post. Oh, sweet. Alright. I've been left to my own devices. Alright. We made it to the ATN cab. I love it. Um, Let's sit down for a meal. Let's kind of like converse with people, see what's up. You approach the long table and find an open place on the bench. The food here is plentiful and appears to be a mix of roasted and dried meats, roasted corn or maize, baked squash and ma beans. Ma maize or maize? I'm saying it the Spanish way, probably. There is also an assortment of berries and other fruit. Overall, the meal is hearty with diverse flavors of savory and sweet. It fills your stomach briefly, knowing, allowing your mind to wander from minute to minute survival. Oh, nice. It's free, too? I don't have to pay you guys? Man, you guys are the best. Can I be one of you guys? Let me get a sweet coat. Uh, the feeling here is one of sharing and respect. Visitors to the table are asked to pay respects to the animals that gave their meat, the three sisters for their fruits, and all creation. In the distance, you see fields of crops, but also a semi-trailer sheet of tarp over frames, and other repurposed grow-ups for their food. You begin to understand the real sense of urgency that Perimeter Patrol must feel watching over this place. The fine line they walk in keeping rubble scum out, by allowing a peaceful traveler's passage. I like these guys. These guys are cool. Alrighty, so we've got some food in us. Excellent. Alrighty. Um, well, I don't think we're sick, but uh, let's check out the trading post. We have a lot of stuff to sell. Uh, the trading post seems to be a place where travelers through resupply and offload items which may be used to the Anishabe. 
A large portion of the inventory appears to be handmade items from local materials and some scavenge goods. Pick up items to purchase items or drop to sell. Alrighty. Oh man, this is awesome. What the fuck is this? Small chunk of fur? Is that from like a dog man? Huh, interesting. What is this? A club? Man, what does this look like? A fucking penis. <laughs> My lord. This looks like a fucking giant dong. That's all good. I, I, I don't mind rocking around with a dong and just clubbing people. Alrighty, um, I want to buy this. $35 is not bad. I have money. I have stuff to sell too. Alrighty, guys. So, how's what we going to do? We're going to um offload some stuff here, obviously. Um, Laptop could go F itself. I don't need it. $55. Thank you, sir. I don't need all of these bags either. Um, Let's find the one that has the best condition. Oh, they all don't have a condition. Excellent. So, I need to unload what's in here too. So, let's um rearrange this really quickly. Alright, Anishabe. Just realize that I'm not giving you everything in here. I just need to empty it out, okay? Let's play this safe. You can have a lot of this stuff, just not everything. Noise traps are mine, okay? It's understandable. Noise traps are mine. Uh, shoes are yours. Uh, I want this flashlight, please. Alright. Uh, scope, you could have. I already have one of those. Condition 20.8, yeah. Uh, bags, you could have a lot of these. Uh, I have two more waiting for me anyway, so here, have that one too. Uh, bullets are... Oh, these are bullets that they had, right? I don't think I had all these bullets. Oh, dude, shotgun shells. Hmm. No, no, I'm gonna dump the shotgun. Alrighty, um... I need to figure out some bullets, some bullets. I think I was told the reason why it says some bullets for me and I can't figure it out is because I don't have the range skill. Range lets you identify bullets, which obviously would have been really amazing here, but, you know. Live and learn, right? So, noise trap is mine. I'll keep those. Um, I'll keep the string, all right? Shoes you could have. Don't eat those, and you could have this as well. And let me go into my person now, if you don't mind. Shotgun. Man, it's been good, man, but... I never used you, so let's just kind of get some money for it. It's, it's gonna be $400, so look at that, we're almost up to $2,000. I'm fucking loving that. And I want to give them this too, but I, I, I don't have, they don't have enough room. Do they? How do I do this? Oh, they have no more room! Okay, wait a minute, this is a trouble spot here. Let's rearrange this now, I guess, and... Here's what we'll do. I'll... Tan and tea could be good. I think this actually heals um, infections, if I'm correct. So, you know what? It might not be a bad idea to actually take some of this. So, what I will do is just uh, drink up from one of these guys. I could have sold it to him, too, I suppose, but whatever. We'll fill that up, and then this right here. Drink this up, and then we'll buy this, too. Okay. Um, club, I do need. Is it the end of the wrench? Oh, man. I love the wrench. I'm gonna hold on to the wrench, I think. I I'm gonna have room for this after this anyway. Uh, some bullets. Alrighty, so this seems like the bullets for the handgun. Let's see, how does this compare to this? Like, does it look simply similar or not really, huh? This might be for the... for this, the hunting scope, I wanna say. Let's try it out. Like, what if I was to do this? Would this equip? No, it doesn't equip to the thing. That equips. Okay, so these are for the scope. I don't care about the scope. This is obviously shotgun shells. Would this be for the handgun? I could find out if I could equip it, but I would need to... sell this first. Can I... Oh, God. Damn it. Anishabe, you're breaking my balls here. Alright, how do I do this? Um... Why are you guys selling spoiled meat? Out of curiosity. Fuck, how do I do this? I need to sell this to them. Hmm, hardened spears only four, huh? But I can't carry it, too. How do I do this? Oh, there they have the crude bow. This used to be an Anishabe bow. Or maybe that's because I had the range skill that I could identify it. Who knows? Um, this is to carry stuff to travel us, but it sucks because we have the box car. We're good. I don't know, man. Uh, I need to get the club, obviously. Let's rearrange stuff here for momentarily for us, and let me... take Monkey Wrench off for a second. And we'll put Monkey Wrench down here for now. I'm gonna buy this club for sure. <laughs> I love it. War Club. Hell yeah. Alrighty. Um, I need to make room to sell them the fucking scope, however. How much more room do I need? I need one more line at the very least. Okay, how do we do this? Like, can you move this? Oh, hunting. Oh, that's what I sold them right now. Guys, can you move, like, your shit up a bit? It's really breaking my balls here. Alrighty, what about... Um, let me buy these quote-unquote crude arrows from you. I'm gonna sell them back to you, by the way. Rearrange now. Okay, that might be enough. Go over here. 
Boom. Excellent. Now you can take your fucking arrows back. I don't need them. Put that there. Put that right there. Uh, I'm gonna have to hold on to this arrow, it seems, because I don't think I have enough room. Okay. Anything else that I need? What is this? Handful of small twig and bark. I don't need that. And bullets. I don't need those type of bullets. So now that I've done that, let's equip the gun. Right? Let's, uh, take off our stuff. And let's see their bullets. That obviously doesn't work. No. No, thank you. You guys can keep that. Does this work? This does work. Okay. So, since we're going to only roll with the handgun, I might as well take some bullets. It's going to cost $200, which is kind of a pain. But let's be real here. I'd rather have some ammunition. I mean, we have 11 shots right now, but four more wouldn't be bad. It is going to cost us $200, which is uh, kind of really pushing it, even though we're at 2000 I think we need 3000 was it, for the augmentation, or was it 5000 I forget exactly the number. I think it was 3000 no. Um... Let's see here. Do I want to buy it? Do I want to spend $200 on some bullets? I kind of do, just in case it comes down to it. I mean, sure, I'm melee, but I don't know, man. I have 11 shots right now. Hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know. Risky business, indeed. Not sure how to go about this. Let me equip my gun first and foremost with seven bullets. I could sell him this! I could just roll with seven bullets and yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna sell them our bullets instead. Instead of buying, I'm gonna just sell ours. All right, there we go. We're gonna roll with this. I hope it doesn't bite me in the ass. Um, Hydrocodone, they don't really care about that. Painkillers 56, not really that good of a trade-off in reality. I need the sedation pills definitely, and or else I can't sleep. Um, I have two of these, don't I? Yeah, I definitely do. Let's see. Can I empty this out? Alrighty, I could sell them this one. This one has charges though, so let's uh, really quickly... No. Put you here. I just want to empty out the charges. These charges are mine, motherfuckers. You keep your hands off of them. Alright, so you could have this one. And now let me go back to my person here and... Well, I'll just charge it myself later. Cell phone, do I really need this in reality? No, not without the hacking scout. I don't believe it's useful to us. So here, take that. Memory card, I've pretty much lost all hope about that. Lighters. I have three lighters. This one's about to 19.5. Here, get this one off of my back. Anything else? Anything else now? Speak now or forever uh, hold your peace. And what is this? Oh, some bullets. Sweet. Does this work on mine? No. So here, sell that too. <laughs> Excellent. Alrighty. Good. We unloaded quite a bit and we made some serious da dash over here. Look at that shit. 2.3. Alrighty. Or 2,300. Okay, good. I think that's it. I could take their sweet coat too, but do I really need that? I don't think I do. Yeah, I was going to remove my vest too. Fuck that. I left my vest. So, that's it. I think we're done here, right? Yeah, I'm not sure what the fuck that is. Uh, don't need that. Yeah, I'm good. Birch bag? Can I equip that? Oh, I can equip that on my shoulder? Oh, you got to be kidding me. Sweet, I'll take it. Yeah, sure. So a few extra spots to carry stuff. $22? That's all right. That's a perfect trade. Alrighty, good, good, good. Uh, I'm good. Saucepan, I already have one, right? I used to. What happened to my saucepan? I lost my saucepan? How did I do that? Oh, was, oh, I think that was mine and I just had it in here, right? That's probably what happened. Okay, uh, you need to go back inside of here. Okay, good, good. Rearrange this really quickly. Crowbar we hold on to. Oh, the crowbar could actually go on our back now that I think about it. But we could do that off the site anyway. Now that we have nothing on our bag, the crowbar could hang out back over here, which is more room for us. I love it, man. We did really good. I'm so glad I found this place. Now, hopefully when I leave, they don't decide to fucking kill me. That's what would be the downside of this. Alrighty. So, we're done with the trading post. We sold off a lot of the extra stuff. We're still kind of burdened a bit, but a little bit less. It's probably because of all the water I'm carrying, though. So, I think we're good. Um, I just want to visit Joe one more time and see what's up. Uh, You head... Towards a duster of tents near the edge of camp, by the forest, patients reside here, helping attend the area, many of which are in rehabilitation from drug addiction or other conditions. Warriors are more visible here, keeping in peace in an area where frustration and desperation can overcome the healing. This is Joe Midawani Danuki. All right, um, yeah, as for treatments for whatever I might have, might as well take the, I got the sweat tr lodge treatment, you thank Joe. Cool, I love that they don't charge you for anything. I could eat over here, I could get cured, and they don't charge. I love these people. Now, these are good people, man. Alright, so let's go to the main area. And I think we're done. Yeah, our thirst is good. Yeah, man, we're fucking 
fucking baller right now. I love it. All righty. I don't even want to leave. But if I didn't leave, that would be the end of the walkthrough, and I don't want that to happen. I'm loving this playthrough. All right, so let's leave the village. Gathering your things, you set off for the forest and the wilderness beyond. Oh, and there's a town over there. That is so fucking awesome. That was the tits. I loved everything that went down right there. Really quickly, let's um, unequip this and put this shit on my back, dude. All righty. Just put the team on my back, put the crowbar on my back. All righty, look at this. I'm loving it, man. I even have a gun in hand. This is sweet. All right. Some bullets. Not enough bullets, but, you know, whatever. I could always get bullets later. Let's do a little bit of rearrangement here. And by the way, this could go into our flashlight, too. So let's uh, make sure we equip that. Get your ass in the... No, just go in there. Go in here, man. Go in the flashlight. Go in the flashlight. God damn it. <laughs> Alrighty, good. So, let's call it an episode here, guys. I mean, nothing much happened, but hey, we finally did one of the quests which we were looking for. Our Wendigo thing is finally cured. Um, so, that should kind of heal us up a bit in terms of uh, eating. So, that's, I'm really happy about that. Our meat's about to spoil soonish, but we still have some in case we continue onward. And we're going to continue onward. Let's find out exactly where in the map we're at here. And we're over here, so this is going to be the uh, ATN camp. So I guess from this point, where do we go? We still have a great north to explore. I guess we'll do that. I guess we'll explore up here, and then we can always go back to the camp and sell stuff. So I'm fucking digging it. Hopefully you guys are too. Um, Alright. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I encourage you to click the thumbs button. Support really does mean a lot. And other than that, I'll catch you guys next time.